This is episode one of Python Stage Tutorials. These are all the nodes. I might add some more later, but we'll start here. This is on enter, the events on enter, on mouse events, keyboard events, and so on. This is the docs, well, it'll send you here. And you could see these are the events on mouse, double click on key events, and so on. Uh, this is the uh, directory uh, for the utilities. Uh, so you can have all the functions that uh, Python states have. So you can find it on your uh, desktop in your files. Uh, never mind this, we'll get back to that later. So we'll start from this side and we'll move forward. And it'll get progressively harder and harder. Uh, so the blue-ish boxes are uh, easy to get or understand. Uh, the more purplish ones are a little bit harder. And, you know, the darker they get, the harder they get. Uh, and then th these are some game examples uh, that are... Um, you know, just fun, uh, but uh, just to show uh, what uh, the Python states is capable of and uh, how far can you push it. So we'll start with uh, just a simple hello world. Okay, so I'll just visualize that and hit enter in the viewport and it will say hello world. So, okay, uh, let's allow editing of content and then I'll uh, do type properties. Uh, you don't have to allow editing, but uh, if there's something inside the node and it doesn't show up, uh, allowing editing will help you see what's inside. Okay, so we'll look at the interactive section and this is the code or the script. Uh, this is uh, by default, it's mandatory it comes with the script uh, this part right here as well uh, importing the houdini uh, methods functions and everything uh, but this is what's happening with this specific node it's saying on enter we are printing hello world uh, let's first i'll use this node here i'll create a new Python states interactive script, and we'll see what comes with it by default, and we'll compare it to everything else we'll see in, in a bit. So this is a fresh new uh, HDA I created. You could create, uh, you probably know how to create an HDA. So it's just, you go in here and you create digital asset and you name it and so on. But uh, once you have it, you have this type properties and you have this uh, interactive uh, tab here. So this is the basic. We go to interactive and we click new and you will get this pop up menu and it has so many options. Uh, we, we could do on enter or we could leave it blank, but let's do on enter and it will give us the enter method and then we'll use that. So uh, this at the top, I don't really need. Uh, this is what we saw at the bottom. It's just mandatory. I usually just delete this. I'm trying to keep the text here as small as possible so that you, the user, or the watching tutorials, like you can just take in what you need uh, for now. Um, okay, so on enter. Uh, this is called bound to states when it starts. So when we hit and when we hit enter, uh, this anything in here will run. Um, so this node, uh, it's it's the actual node, uh, the HDA itself, this node. So if it has any parameters, we can use this and grab its parameters or go inside of it and grab geometry from it and attributes from those geometry groups. So what we could do here, we could do print and then We'll print hello. And I'll hit apply. Visualize that and hit enter. 
in the viewport and we'll get this hello. Okay, so now that we've done this part, we can move on and look at the other ones uh, and see what they do. Okay, so allow editing, there's nothing inside, you can just match definition and then go to type properties, interactive, and this is what it's doing. Uh, and it, I put a label here to tell you what it's doing. So enter, interrupt, resume, and exit. Um, hover over the viewport. So if we hit enter, so if it's outside the viewport, it gets interrupted. And if it's inside, it resumes. And when we hit escape, uh, it exit the state. So this is what's happening here. And this is what we saw earlier uh, with the handle events. Uh, so on interrupt, exit, resume. And this is what we were seeing just now. Uh, so this is the event. And this is what happens on enter. Um, you, you print enter. On exit, you print exit. And on interrupt, when the mouse goes outside the viewport, you hit interrupt. And on resume, when it goes inside the viewport, it resumes. So write parameters. So this will foo will be set to 3. So whenever I hit enter, this value here will be set to 3. So I hit enter, it's set to 3. And I change it and I'll do it again, and it's set to 3 again. So what's happening here? Uh, let's allow, there's nothing inside, okay? Uh, type properties, parameters. Uh, we have a parameter here, uh, it's called foo, and it's set to 0 by default, okay? We go to interactive. Um, so the same same stuff we had earlier. So this is the mandatory stuff, and this is what's happening. Uh, so on enter, uh, we get the node itself, and as we said, we, if we have the node, we can get the parameter of the node. So this is the node dot parm. We get the parameter, but which parameter? Foo parameter foo. So this is if you hover over it. So this is the label. But if you hover over it, it'll say the actual name of it. Uh, and it's the same here. If you go to foo here, uh, this is the label and this is the name. We need the name. We don't want the label. You could label it wherever, but we need the name to get the parameter. So node, we get the node itself, dot param, uh, dot parm. Uh, then we get foo this actual parameter, and then dot set 3. If I put this to 34, hit apply, and then enter, and then it's set to 34. If I hit again, and exit, enter, and it's always set to 34. So this is how you set parameters in Python states. Um, float parameters at least. Okay, let's look at read and write. We'll go to type properties. Uh, let's see first. So it says on enter, read foo and double double it and write to foo. Okay, so it will read this number, it will double it, and then it will write it here. So this will become three. So 1.5, hit enter, it becomes three. And then I hit enter again, it becomes six. Escape, enter, escape, enter, escape, enter, and you can see how it's it keeps doubling. Um, what's happening here? So same thing. Uh, this is the mandatory, you know, just by default comes in. Okay, uh, then on enter, we get the node, and foo. Now we, I named foo uh, as a variable uh, so that I can easily reuse it. Um, so foo node itself, eval parm. So eval parm evaluates the value of the parameter. Uh, before we were just getting the parm, uh, 
and we're doing the same here. So we're we're setting we're setting farm uh, foo to the new value of foo. Before before uh, we were just doing three like that, but now we have this uh, this value here. So we got it first. We got the node. We got we evaluated the the value the the foo value, and then I use this uh, foo value multiplied equal to two so that multiplies foo by two now this is doubled and i set the doubled value back to the parameter so and this is happening on enter so every time i hit enter it will keep doubling okay let's uh, read and write vector and then we close this video and then uh, in the next video we'll um, either go this way on the mouse events or maybe we do multi parms uh, we'll see like uh, they're they're both interesting maybe this is uh, a little bit complicated i might start with the the mouse and keyboard and then maybe move my way back down here but this is the last one for this video read write vectors so same same idea uh, like uh, floats but vectors this time so this will read and double the values for the vector so two four six and now this should see four eight twelve and so on uh, so what's the difference between a float and a vector so here eval uh, parm tuple so tuple is the vector uh, that's that's the difference so before we were we were doing eval parm but now it's eval parm tuple and that's how you get a vector uh, then I name it in this v value here, uh, v variable, uh, who dot uh, vector three. This is needed so that uh, you can convert uh, this uh, parameter vector value into uh, like a Houdini native way of uh, reading uh, vectors. Uh, and then we double that, uh, multiplied by two. We get the node again. And then this time, instead of parm, we get parm tuple. And then we just set the same thing. So setting v, the value v, uh, which is the doubled vector of this foo value. OK. And, okay. Uh, and then this is the, the variables. This is the label, and so on. Okay. I hope this makes sense. Uh, this is just the start, and then um, we'll move on to the next video.